Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Mei and Hinata. Part 1. Huge shout out to OG Eyes for this story. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. The sound of multiple people snoring, that's all he heard as he tried his best to turn it out, but sadly failed. It was annoying. Dot sighing to himself the figure turned his head to the right as his vision immediately became clouded by the shadows of never-ending pitch of darkness, he stared for a while until his vision adapted to the change of the environment, now he could see a lot clearer. He was able to notice a few things now, like the ancient looking brick wall that was illuminated by the light that mysteriously originated from the window and the sight of thick yet rusty metal rods that went from the ground up to the roof of the room he resided in. He was unhappy with where he found himself, and also the fact that he was woken up by the noise his rheumatis were making. Already knowing that it was going to be impossible to go back to sleep, he sat up on his strong yet little mattress, stretching his limbs as he lay his feet on the ground. He was immediately greeted by the cold yet stony floor, he curled his toes as he felt the sand under his feet, the mysterious figure relaxed his hands by his sides as he released yet another sigh, he couldn't help it he was tired of this place. He was immediately greeted by the cold yet stony floor, he curled his toes as he felt the sand under his feet, the mysterious figure relaxed his hands by his sides as he released yet another sigh, he couldn't help it he was tired of this place. Thinking to himself he could have listed a hundred of things he rather use his precious time for yet here he was in a stupid prison, accused of a crime he obviously did not commit, it made no sense. His fingers curled into a fist as he felt his anger begin to build up, he hated when this happens and quite frankly it was a frequent occurrence. The figure stood on his shaky feet trying to escape having a flashback of past events. Letting out a laugh that felt empty, he knew it was already too late for that as he made his way towards the window in his room. He stood straight reaching a good height of 6-1 the figure stood still looking directly at the moon, almost as if they were having a silent conversation. The figure closed his single eye as he let the aura of the moon wash away his anger, he felt the nice breeze of the night blow through the window towards him as his usual vibrant but now dusty golden locks danced with the wind, he opened his left eye to reveal a nice looking blue eye that could be compared to the morning sky. He let his lips drop into a slight frown, an action which his other facial features seemed to flow with, including the marks on his face which strangely resembled Whiskers. It was now clear who the figure is, as there is only one person with blonde hair, blue eyes or should I say eye and whiskers a person by the name Naruto Uzumaki, a genin of Kanahagakur no Sato. I really shouldn't be this surprised, I kinda expected something like this to happen to me at some point in life, to be honest if it was the council who voted for me to be arrested I would have expected it, but the Hokage herself Naruto thought having grown up as an orphan, who for some strange reason was hated by a large population of the village. Including a large number of the higher ups as they don't know much about sealing, or just choose to ignore what little knowledge they had, choosing to instead use him as a means to project their anger on past events, he did not know about the QB until he graduated from the academy. He couldn't help but feel that they were the reason why he was sacrificed, yet they still had the guts to hate him and very rarely attack him. I mean it made sense the fourth sealed the demon in him to keep it from hurting them, maybe even others and here they were hating on someone who had no say in giving up his normal life for them. Despite the third encouraging him that making them see him as himself, rather than the QB, Naruto felt like they were the ones that had to gain his recognition for all they did to him. Almost like he wanted me to subconsciously make them a priority muse Naruto. If that's the case he wanted to ensure my loyalty to the village and its inhabitants Naruto thought haha I don't think the old man would do such a thing deep down, he knew it was possible, after all the third did lie to him about the reason the villagers hated him and his family. Seeing where his thoughts were going Naruto decided it would be best to think about this later, after all he didn't have a lot of time to kill here. Quickly cutting where his mind was going to maybe some other time thought Naruto as his mind began to move toward how all this happened. He sighed again to gather his thoughts. The pain of knowing that the people you trusted the most, the ones who you believed would always have your back, but yet they end up betraying you that's what hurts the most Naruto said solemnly as he let his mind drift away from reality. Staring into the moon his surroundings slowly morphed into a completely different place where he Naruto stood on the head of a very large rock, carved to resemble the first Hokage, and in front of him, Sasuke stood on opposite sides of the Valley of the End, the head of Madara Che. Remembering the fight wasn't what he wanted now in his younger days he concluded that Sasuke was somehow manipulated into betraying them, their trust friendship but over time it became clear to him that his best friend and rival, Sasuke, had actually attempted to kill him just to get to Orochimaru and if it wasn't for the fox he would have died that day. I have to end this fast, I'm losing so much blood and my body can't keep going on with this much strain thought Naruto looking at the hole in his shoulder and other wounds he had. 
Meanwhile Sasuke was having similar thoughts, except his concern was the possibility of the Hokage sending reinforcement, it would be a lot problematic as he was injured and didn't really have the strength to fight more people. His only option was ending this match quickly and with that he called in his chakra feeling the flow of the energy, Sasuke embraced the curse mark's dark power. Naruto seeing this called upon the QB's chakra, immediately he felt the rush of it flowing through his body. It was intoxicating giving him the feeling like he could take on an entire army and not get tired, but he had to focus on what was ahead of him, his mission, and that's what he did. They stared into each other's eyes. Let's end this. This battle, and all the battles we've had until now. Sasuke yelled, quickly calling upon the rest of his chakra to use the Chidori. Naruto stood still, closing his eyes, as he made a Rasengan in his good hand. They stood there, staring, until they both suddenly jumped forward, screaming. Naruto. Sasuke. Suddenly Naruto heard a beeping sound trying to ignore it he continued walking, groaning loudly in annoyance, having grown tired of hearing the sound he decided to find its origin okay now where's that sound coming from he thought while walking in a house that looked like his except it was somehow merged with the Hokage Tower. He had been walking for hours but he wasn't tired which was weird and so he decided to just use the window since the doors obviously kept pulling him into random weird places. Ignoring the increasing sound he opened the window and looked outside preparing to jump, but was greeted with a crazy sight. The building was huge, it was so tall that it would make QB look like a kid if he stood near it, immediately realizing jumping would no doubt kill him, Naruto was about to close the window when his body suddenly went limp, as if it had been drained of all its energy, loosing his balance, he fell backwards hitting his head on the edge of the window before falling through the window. Oh my god Kami save me he was all he could say as he tried to somehow move his paralyzed limbs in an attempt to stop himself from falling to his death. Nunaruto shouted as his body jerked forward breathing heavy he looked around to familiarize with the environment, after taking calm breaths, he was finally able to stabilize his breathing where am I? He questioned with a puzzled look. Lucky for him someone came by when they heard the noise he made inside. What happened from then was a total blur as he was completely thinking about his previous mission. His stay in the hospital was not one that he liked as he couldn't see his friends, train, eat Raymond, he just stared at plain white walls for days, and the occasional checkups by doctors, sometimes even Tsunade or Shizune. Time skip, one week later. Naruto currently was at Ichiraku Raymond eating his third bowl of Raymond, when a tall shadow covered his vision, lifting up his head he turned to look at it, and to his surprise, it was Jiraiya. Hiro Sen and what are you doing here, Naruto said as he stopped stuffing Raymond in his mouth. What do you mean what am I doing here, I obviously came to see how your Faringaki replied Jiraiya. Not trusting him Naruto asked is that all. Watching him shake his head Jiraiya decided he should just tell him the reason, after all he wasn't going to lose anything. To be honest, when I heard about your condition after the mission I was a little bit worried, so I came to see how you were recovering, that was originally the plan, but. Naruto chose to interrupt then saying, but what? Ignoring him Jiraiya went on I figured if Orochimaru was training your teammate then he would get a lot stronger, and as we can see in your state, you would be no match for him, so why don't I train you too, so that you at least put up a good fight next time. Thinking Naruto said that would be great, but I can't leave my friends, and I'm not sure if Tsunade Basin would agree with your plan. Expecting something like this Jiraiya said don't worry I talked with Tsunade Haim about it, she was okay with it, and don't worry about your friends you would still see them, after all it's not like we're going forever. Okay I'm in said Naruto after briefly reflecting on his answer. Good, we move tomorrow by 6 am sharp, be at the gate now you have enough time to make adequate preparations and tell your friends goodbye. That's what Naruto spent his last days in Kanoha doing along with packing for the journey. Time skip, 6 am the next day. Naruto met Jiraiya at the gate who already was with Tsunade and Shizune. After a brief moment of interaction they said their goodbyes, each party going their separate way. You ready for this? Jiraiya questioned while glancing at his student. Looking back at the village towards the rock-carved faces of their previous leaders. Naruto stayed silent for a while as he tried to come on terms with the fact that he won't be seeing his home and friends for a while. Silently vowing to return a lot more stronger, Naruto balled his fist while calming his nerves. Yes. Naruto replied firmly with a serious look of determination. Feeling a bit of pride in his student Jiraiya nodded his head and so Naruto and Jiraiya strolled out, signaling the beginning of their journey. Flashback. The silence was beginning to irritate Naruto, they had been walking for quite some time, and neither him nor his sensei had said anything to each other, or at least tried to start up a conversation, so Naruto being the one who hated the silence spoke up. Hey Iro senin where are we going, and when will we get there? Asked Naruto curious about his first training location. Gureya tiredly sighed still feeling irritated about the nickname the brat gave him he responded. 
Brad how many times have I told you to stop calling me that anyway we are heading for the land of hills, it shouldn't take more than an hour before we get there. Naruto's reply was a simple HMN, as his thoughts immediately became clouded by what he expected the land of hills to be like. I can't help it you're a pervert. Muttered Naruto. Gureya turned his nose up as if offended. Geez how many times do I have to tell you, I'm not just a pervert, I'm a super pervert was Jiraiya's reply looking like he won a gold medal in the Olympics. Still a pervert to me was Naruto's only reply, as the two continued the rest of the way in silence. As Naruto and Jiraiya pass over the border separating Fire Country and Land of Hills, they were greeted by the view of a nearby town. Both grinned at the sight, though Jiraiya's grin scared the hell out of Naruto, on the other hand, he was happy they finally reached the village, now they could explore or even begin the training. Dot. After entering the town they set off to find a hotel. Luckily it wasn't that hard to find after asking random villagers they were pointed to several deciding to pick one that was cheap, and Kinda meets their needs getting in their room and setting their luggage down. Jiraiya turns to Naruto and said I'm going out for a bit, I know you're eager to begin training, but it would be pointless to begin your training now, since both of us are kinda tired from the journey, so why don't you use the time to familiarize with the village in the meantime, I have some work to do concluded, adding a perverted grin. Yeah yeah, go on and do your research. said Naruto with obvious sarcasm. As Jiraiya was leaving to peep on the unsuspecting women at the many hot springs. Naruto decided he wanted to see the village more, and he too left the hotel to explore. Flashback end. Wake up you lousy pieces of shit, there's work to do shouted a guard in the prison, immediately breaking Naruto out of his flashback. Another guard walked the hallways with his metal barton hitting the bars of every cell making a loud noise, this served its purpose in rudely waking the occupants up. Reaching Naruto's room he smiled seems we got an early bird fellas the guard said while stretching his hand on the side of the wall he then said, I see your cooperation was not a one-time thing, keep that up and we won't have to use that on you. Then he turned around and immediately started the daily roll call routine. It lasted for some time, but when they were done they continued their day which consisted of cleaning up, breakfast which was done under tight supervision. Now Naruto and the other prisoners stood in front of the guards as another guard directed them to where they were given either. Shovels, pickaxes and wheelbarrows. Naruto was given a pickaxe and directed to the mines. He sighed, having been doing this for a year and now it's obvious anyone would be tired of the same daily routine. Dot. He was later directed to his mining spot, on his way moving to his designated work area, Naruto suddenly felt like he was being watched, turning his head his side immediately aligned with someone, a person he absolutely is the leader of the crocs, at least what remains of them. The crocs is one of the gangs in the prison and the cause of Naruto's loss of his left eye. Naruto turned his head as he continued following the guards to where he was to work, and immediately the guards instructed him to begin. Unaware of the eyes that watched his every move from a building in the prison. Naruto who had been smashing hard rocks for 4 hours straight, was finally given a 30 minutes break, something he couldn't help but thank Kami for, since he was feeling really exhausted. He sighed in defeat, already knowing he wasn't allowed to leave the location, as his work wasn't completely concluded Naruto moved a good distance from his work area, then got himself comfortable on the floor, watching others perform their work, sluggishly earned them harsh words from the guards, or some getting either flogged with whips or having the seal been used on them. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle as the way the guards pushed them to work, it strangely reminded him of how he does himself when he trains. Flashback. One year after Naruto and Jiraiya's departure from Konoha. Laying on the ground while staring at the night sky. This was something Naruto often found himself doing constantly whenever he trains, sighing tiredly Naruto couldn't help but think about something that had been bothering him, it's been a year now, and Iro Senen hasn't taught me anything reasonable. All he does is either train me to be able to use the Rasengan with one hand, or controlling the QB chakra, which is nice as using clones, slows the speed at which I can perform the attack, also there might be times where I may not have chakra for both clones or Rasengan, but. Getting frustrated he said at this rate I would never reach the point where I don't have to rely on the fox chakra, I may not even be able to beat Sasuke too. This was something that worried Naruto over the year, and he needed to handle it. So sitting up and going into a thinking pose, he decided to think of the areas he sucked and excelled, after a very short time of assessing stealth, basic survival already said soberly. That's not good at all how the hell have I survived this long with only basic skills he mentally screamed, as his mind was trying to figure out this strange phenomenon, pausing he tried to look at some of the perks he had in his conclusion. QBE, it heals me from nearly everything, I'm basically immortal, and with my chakra as high as it is, I can spit jutsus for hours without feeling a drain in my reserves, at least that's what Iro Senen said, I also have a lot of stamina too, which is good going silent, he beepized everything then he said, so basically I need to improve my physical attributes by a lot, to jutsu, chakra control. 
Bane Jutsu, maybe learn to fight with a weapon or two, improving my sensory skills too, Fuin Jutsu seems interesting, maybe I could learn a bit, and finally I need to get a lot smarter he concluded, dreading the action of reading books. It seemed like a lot of work, but Naruto was sure he could do it, after all he did have clone to reduce most of his work, thank Hiro Senen for telling me he smiled thinking about when he asked Jiraiya why he kept ordering him to make clones, study the Rasengan. The Kage Bunshin distributes the ninja's chakra evenly among the clones and creates a solid replica. The clone itself can also utilize any jutsu the original ninja knows. When the clone finally disperses, any new knowledge it has gained is passed back to the original ninja and any additional clones. This makes Kage Bunshin an excellent training method if the ninja has the chakra capacity and stamina to maintain the Kage Bunshins for an extended period of time. This allows you to essentially reduce the time it takes to train and learn with each clone, however, it does not transfer any physical attribute to the original, so the original needs to do that himself. Jiraiya said nonchalantly, while adding didn't you notice this, then all he could hear was the sound of Naruto's brain popping in excitement. Getting up from the floor Naruto had set his mind up on what he should do, now he was going to plan how exactly to progress. It took him some minutes to reach their room in the hotel, wasting no time he immediately made five clones, and using hand they turned to random strangers he had seen in the village, sending them to find things that would be needed for his training, Naruto himself relaxed. Time skip 45 minutes later. What took you guys so long Naruto said to his clones as they walked into the room dropping the bags of things they bought, it's not like everything we needed was just at one place waiting for us, you know replied one clone in annoyance before dropping flat on the floor. The epi's right eye had a hard time finding some things too replied another. The original Naruto said yeah I understand, at least you guys found everything some nodded while others shook their head, frowning slightly he said whatever we have we can manage, so he dispersed them while creating new clones under Henge to go over the library to read. He instructed them to read each book till they were sure they understood them, not just covering many books, but forgetting everything later on, while he rummaged through the bags. To his luck he found a basic to jutsu scroll, training ways, kickboxing fighting style scroll, basic to advance workout guide, meditation for beginners, and a book on survival for dummies. He was a bit unhappy, but the fact that his clone found a dojo where he enrolled to learn basic kinjutsu eased his mind, and so he decided to create a schedule to fit with the training Jiraiya gave him. His training schedule. 6 a.m. 8 o'clock physical training with weights, send a few clones to read in the library for the day. 8 a.m. minus 11 o'clock Rasengan training, clones work on survival training. 11 a.m. 12 p.m. rest, then meditate. 12 p.m. 3 p.m. Naruto and clones learn Kinjutsu. 4 p.m. 6 p.m. to Jutsu. His schedule was good, but had flaws as Jiraiya starts training him whenever he wakes up, and the training to control QB's chakra was something that happened randomly, so he did not have a specific time or date for when he would train in it. But it was progress by the end of the year he was able to complete the basic Tejutsu scroll, survival guide wasn't really a problem, since he was already good at stealth and trap MAKING, thanks to his pranks, it did help him know what's consumable and dangerous to eat, descent progress in Kinjutsu, close to no progress in meditation, out of them all the book reading part was the hardest. Flashback. Two years after Naruto and Jiraiya's departure from Konoha. Naruto was looking forward to resuming his secret training, as he was recently able to buy a complete guide of sealing for dummies, chakra control from basic to advance, and some book on sensory skills for shinobi. Right now he and Jiraiya were making their way towards the land of hot water. They had been to numerous places like the land of tea, land of bears, the land of waterfall and others. His training had been really fruitful though, to Jiraiya he still had a hard time controlling the fox, and the Rasengan remained the same, but right now Jiraiya suggested he works on chakra control and maybe elemental control too. It was really good since he had plans of working on chakra control, right now he couldn't wait to reach there so he could get started. The loud annoying voice interrupted his daydream hey you there, you've been resting for a long time, your break's over now get over here and get back to work. Said some random guard. I responded Naruto loudly as he stood up switching roles with the other person who was working his spot. He then started breaking the rocks into small stones as others mounted the stones into wheelbarrows. Sighing to himself he already knew it was going to be a long day and, with that bastard Izumi constantly glancing at him, he could not afford to slack, as maybe this time it could result to his death. Time skipped several hours later. Finally they had completed their work for the day now all they had to do was take a bath, and then they were free to rest. Walking to the bath which is a large room tiled from top to down with multiple showers with little soap holders near each of them, Naruto stripped of his clothes folding them and dropping them on a bench. He then walked to an empty shower where he let the water wash away the filth from his body, stretching for the soap that was beside him, he lazily scrubbed himself clean. 
He enjoyed the water, it feels comforting and even reminds him of when he was learning the water walking exercise I fell in the water so many times, I even started disliking you. Now here I am seeking comfort in you he thought as he continued to rub himself with the soap. Flashback. Two years away from Kanoha, continuation. He had finally gotten down the leaf exercise merged with water walking, and although he was happy, his control wasn't at its best, still it was a lot better than before, even Jureya said that it was really good at that as complete chakra control wasn't needed, it also helped that now he could make the Rasengan with one hand or both hands at the same time without clones. But the fact that it took him the whole year to get his control that good even with clones, bummed him at least his other trainings were successful, now he could sense chakra easier, but not if the enemy is very far from him, his elemental training was perfect, he could rip leaves to shred even bricks and other things, just for the fun of increasing his control of the element. But in all his biggest achievement is the knowledge he got from reading most times the clones got upset and refused to do it or they got distracted by something, but finally he could proudly say he is was no longer stupid dot. Yuinjutsu was also going good, but it was obvious after reading the basic that it is something you use your imagination to strengthen, that's to say if you have a weak imagination, it would only limit the amount of things you can do with seals. Meanwhile. While Naruto was daydreaming the bathroom was getting heated. Many people saw Izumi and some of his goons come in, and sensing something bad about to happen, they quickly dispersed leaving Naruto and some few who were slow to run inside. Well 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 look what we have here boys, we got ourselves a lost Yuzumaki Izumi said, drawing Naruto out of his flashback. I almost feel sad for what we going to do to the brat almost some random thug said. Aha anything to make the crocs the most feared gang in Hazuki castle, said some other thug slamming his fist into his palm. Naruto noticing the bathroom condition turned to Izumi and said HMN what can I do for you Izumi-chan and his little harem army, grinning at the furious crowd of thugs, knowing his plan to anger them worked. Oh not much just something along the lines of dying. Though knowing you we would have to forcefully do that replied Izumi trying to hide the anger at being called gay. Sorry but I'm not really ready for that just yet Naruto replied while looking at the thugs noticing they were only seven, along with Izumi making the maid in total. The haha the boys have been preparing for this for some time and unlike last time, we're not going to fail, Izumi said shifting backwards as the thugs surrounded Naruto. Try to keep me entertained Yuzumaki Izumi though happy that Naruto did not just surrender himself to them. Naruto frowned knowing the only way out is either he dies or they die, so he strengthened his resolve, deciding to come out victorious. Betting into a boxing stance which was him spreading his leg while one hand curled into a fist, the other folded gripping the soap he stared waiting for them to charge, and like the fools they were they did. The thugs rushed in order to inflict pain on him, and after two steps in, Naruto threw the soap on the floor as it slid towards where one thug stepped on it, falling to the ground while dragging another with him. Lucky for the other thug that was dragged down, he was able to fall on his hands the other fell smashing his head on the ground opening his skull, instantly killing him, but his luck fell out when Naruto rushed him and stomped his neck hard with his feet breaking it. Naruto was then tackled by another thug hitting his back into the wall, injuring him and leaving a crack on the tiles of the wall, as the thug proceeded to punch his stomach rapidly, with as much power he could muster hurting him. Naruto was breathing heavily from the adrenaline rushing in his veins, and from the pain of both the punches and wall slam, it took him a lot of strength to lift up his hands, dropping it with all his strength allowing his elbow to crush the thug's spine, weakening him, Naruto then slammed the thug's face into the shower handle with so much force that it passed through his eye socket. Even his head hit the tiled wall cracking it, the body of the thug went limp as blood came gushing out staining the floor, signaling his death to both his teammates and those watching the fight. Izumi and the other thugs watched in horror as their teammates were killed before their eyes. He killed Hirasaki, Kadeyama and Furuhata kill that demon for what he did to the others shouted Izumi loosing his cool. The other thugs rushed at Naruto throwing punches and kicks like psychos. It was unavoidable, Naruto was getting beating, and he wanted to end this fight too, so ducking under a direct punch to his face by another thug Naruto threw a punch to the thug's throat, letting the thug grip on it while coughing violently. Naruto moved around the falling body as another thug threw a kick which hit him on the left side of the ribs, Naruto gripped the thug's leg as he pulled him to the floor, hitting his head on the tile floor. Fuck, fuck, fuck Naruto chanted mentally as he continuously slammed the thug's head on the floor, blood rushed out of the thug's battered skull with every hit. Naruto was angry at them, at his friends, at Konoha, and he was taking his anger out on them. Not seeing another thug which was the last, the thug tackled him from the back. Naruto was now on the floor when the thug tried to put him in a chokehold. Izumi seeing that the thug was successful rushed and started kicking him in the ribs to weaken him. It was working at least for a while, but the thug was loosing his hold on Naruto, and Izumi noticed it as he started backing away, Naruto moved his head with so much speed forward, then moved it backwards, head butting the thug in the nose making him release him to nurse his now broken nose. 
Naruto shakily stood up ignoring the bleeding thug as he set his eye on Izumi, shakily balancing himself on his feet Naruto walked towards him. Izumi looked towards Naruto and glanced at all his fallen men in fear saying demon stay back, I will he didn't get to finish his sentence as Naruto immediately tackled him into the wall, raining punches to his face, this could have gone on for hours if it wasn't for the guards that came in shouting at everyone, then activating that damn seal which added more pain on him. And with the condition Naruto was in he simply couldn't handle it, so his body dropped signaling him passing out. The final thought going through Naruto's head as Naruto lay on the ground looking at the blurry side of the broken and bleeding body of Izumi was what would she think of me if she saw this, then his eyeball rolled up his skull and his eyelid closed. Five figures walked through the gates of Konoha, two of them talking, while the others followed closely listening to the conversation, this four people were the members of Team 8, along with Akimaru. They were just returning from a successful mission, which although not really dangerous was quite taxing. I'm really disappointed we didn't run into any bandits or enemy shinobi complained Kiba. But you earned him a response from his other teammate Shino HMN, if we did encounter some resistance, you would just complain about how easy it was taking them down, Kiba knew what Shino said was true, but he still couldn't help it. At least it wouldn't have made the patrol that boring Kiba muttered signaling the end of the conversation. Finally reaching the gates they stood with the guards while clearing themselves for entry into the village, this was standard protocol for all ninjas returning from missions. Turning to her students Kurenai dismissed them while she shunshined to report the mission details to the Hokage. Ah finally free Kiba said the moment Kurenai left, turning to his teammates he said excitedly, hoping they could hang out for a while. So what you guys gonna do now Shino giving a thoughtful reply responded. I don't know, but I'm sure by the time I reach home I would have figured something out Kiba turned to the last member of their team who had been a lot quiet. What about you Hinata he said giving her a smile, Shino seeing this turned slightly to show her he too was interested in what she had to say. She kept quiet for some seconds gathering her thoughts she replied I'm going to take a nice bath, maybe a nap I'm a bit tired, then quickly saying to them before Kiba could suggest anything else she said, I should go now, we'll see you guys later turning from them she began walking away. Kiba let out a sigh feeling bummed up from her reply, letting his shoulders drop he was thinking she's been like this ever since Naruto got jailed and his secret got out. She hardly spends time with anybody, even us when we're not on missions, and if anyone tried inviting her out, she would just turn them down, saying she had things to do, it's like she is distancing herself from us. A hand to his shoulder cut him off as he turned his head from the retreating form of his teammate, looking at Shino whose hand was on his shoulder, he sighed already knowing what was going to happen next, I know you're going to say give her time, but it's been years, and she still hasn't shown any sign of change towards anyone he said, before muttering I'm worried about her. We're her teammates the least she can do is let us in. Shino understood what Kiba was talking about, you see when the secret about Naruto broke out some of their friends were scared, they believed what the villagers said about Naruto being the demon. Kiba was one of them along with Ino and Sakura, they kind of voiced their opinion about it. But Sakura saying that although Naruto was her teammate, she had seen what the power he held could do and it was dangerous. Ino voiced her opinion on if the sealing of a demon into Naruto was like possession, then the possibility of QB controlling Naruto was very high, as she doubted the possibility of his mind gaining dominance of the foxes. Kiba agreed with her view and suggested that if it was true Naruto should be kept secure and locked down to prevent the fox from escaping, maybe even seal his chakra so he won't have access to it. This upset Hinata as they had no faith in Naruto controlling the fox power and Kiba's assumption that the best plan would be to lock Naruto-kun for who knows how long. Sure that was basically what Sun did, but hers was different, Kiba suggesting his friend, someone they grew up with spend the rest of his life locked up, made her angry. Things were getting bad real fast Tsunade had only called them there to clarify the truth from whatever nonsense they heard now here, they were arguing like she called them here on the fate of Naruto, she needed to end things before it got real bad. Luckily Shikamaru was quick to point out that it was not necessary as he had stayed in control since they were little, so there was no danger, and how Kiba would feel if he was the one in Naruto's case. That seemed to calm them down enough to think straight, but to Hinata what Kiba and the others said still upset her, how quick they were to point out that he should be sealed and prisoned, almost as if they saw him as a weapon, just waiting to break, instead of a human being. Ever since that day Hinata had slowly distanced herself from Kiba, Ino and Sakura. Kiba giving Shino a small smile decided it was time to leave, with that he walked away signaling Akimaru to follow him. Shino stared at Kiba as he and Akimaru walked away, he understood why Hinata wanted to be away from them, most of all Kiba. It was disappointing that after the arrest and raid of Naruto's home Kiba had taken it upon himself to try and win Hinata's heart, he had probably seen it as an opportunity Kami was giving him. He tried everything even if it meant tarnishing Naruto's image so he could look good in her eyes, but nothing seemed to work at all. This upset Kiba to the point where he spoke about a sensitive topic during one of their days hanging out with the others. 
Kiba had gotten a little too drunk and spoke too much when he thought she wasn't around why doesn't she want to wake up from her fairy tale dream and see reality, Naruto does not and never would have feelings for her Shino remembered the words. Sure it was not hard to tell that Kiba had feelings for Hinata, but whatever chances he had back then are probably non-existing now. Shaking his head lightly to clear his thoughts he began walking home. Meanwhile with Hinata. The journey to her apartment wasn't long, but it was rather uneventful, this pleased Hinata as she wasn't ready for any unnecessary company. Arriving at the apartment she opened the door letting herself in. Studying her environment to make sure everything was the same way she left. Satisfied she made her way to her bathroom which although small when compared to the one she had in the Hyuga clan house, still fulfilled its purpose, filling the bathtub with water, she then went to her room where she discarded her sweaty clothes, before going into the bathroom she stood in front of her mirror, where she inspected herself for some minutes, then she got slowly into the tub. Adjusting herself till she felt completely relaxed, she leaned her head back while closing her eyes as she let herself drift into her thoughts. So much had happened over the past few years that Hinata wanted to reminisce on, kinda like a bumpy ride, and it seemed like the main cause of these random events seemed to be tied to something, or rather someone Naruto-kun Hinata whispered remembering everything about him, from his cute smile to his beautiful eyes, it always made her feel giddy just by thinking about him. Hinata frowned to herself as she continued to flood her imagination with how good-looking, brave, strong-spirited and perfect he is how many times do I have to remind you, he already has someone she reminded herself. Not too long after Naruto was arrested Tsunade as requested by the daimyo was to conduct search on Naruto's belongings for any information about the attack or at least something that might be useful. The search was long and unfruitful luckily, when they were about to call an end, some lucky Anbu found a secret compartment in the floor with all kinds of things ranging from diaries. Scrolls and letters which upon reading led to the discovery of Naruto's private training and interaction with a woman named Mei which from observation had been going on from a very long time, they seemed to have formed some kinder relationship and used letters to communicate either for security purpose or distance, this came as a shocker to everyone, as they thought Naruto still had feelings for Sakura, Jiraiya on the other, had was proud Naruto got a girlfriend hopefully she was good looking. But then he was a bit saddened that he wasn't told about it, including his private training. Meanwhile with Tsunade. Kurenai had just left her office after her mission briefing, laying her head on her desk Tsunade, let out a muffled moan, happy that Kurenai had made the briefing as short as possible, this gave her enough time to rest. Relaxing her body she muttered you were so easy to understand when you were little, why did you change so much remembering a little boy with sun-kissed hair and blue eyes staring at her. Naruto she murmured remembering when everything went bad. Flashback. Nine months after returning from training trip. It was 7 a.m. in the morning the birds were chirping, the sky was as beautiful as always, and people were waking up. Tsunade Senju on the other hand, had been working in her office for what felt like hours now, feeling exhausted she was about to relax her head on her desk for some minutes, when Shizune burst through her door, yelling Tsunade-sama, you have to see this. Dot. Raising her head as fast as possible so Shizune would not know she was about to sleep yes, what is it Shizune, and why are you shouting so loud it's only 7 in the morning, said Tsunade, trying to keep a serious face. Sensei a letter, it's from the Raikage before she could go on Tsunade replied. Raikage what does he want while looking bored? Hushing the letter to her read it was all she replied. Grabbing the open letter Tsunade took one last look at her student, who seemed to be shaking either with fear or excitement from what's in the letter, looking at the letter she was surprised with what was written inside. Reading it more Tsunade's shocked expression turned to one that showed complete worry about the person the letter concerned he would never do such a thing, this has to be a mistake was all she could think. This was bad, something like this could start something big, maybe even war. This has to be some kinda joke Tsunade said, trying to be calm while standing up. I thought so too, but apparently the signature of the Raikage at the bottom states otherwise Shizune replied. Thinking on how to deal with this Tsunade came with a conclusion Shizune call a meeting with the council, and elders tell them to be in the meeting room by 1pm sharp. But that Shizune bowed before turning walking away to do her job. With that Shizune bowed before turning walking away to do her job. 1pm. Council room. The council room which was made up of clan leaders, civilians and the village elders. These leaders were made up of Tsuma Yuzuka, Hiyashi Hyuga, Shibi Aburami, Inoichi Yamanaka, Choza Akamichi, Shikaku Naradot, the civil section being filled by certain merchants and high political figures, which was led by none other than Mabu Hirano. The other two elders were Kahari Yutakane, Hamura Mitakado and Danzo Shimura. Tsunade being in the middle of both of them. Tsunade noticing that everyone was present stood up and decided to speak, this council meeting has been called into session. 
Earlier this morning we received a letter from the Raikagetsu Nade said before she could go on, she noticed how the mood of the inhabitants had changed into one of worry, many of them were murmuring about what he wanted and some about why they should listen him. Considering how last time he tricked them. All this was getting on Tsunade's nerves, since they had not even heard what the letter was about, and they were quick to jump to conclusion that it's about some kind of treaty, she was about to yell at them when someone spoke Hokage-sama what is the letter about, turning her sight to the person it was none other than Danzo. Founder and leader of Root, he gained notoriety because of his frequent unsanctioned actions and his often suspected, but rarely proven, undermining of specific Konoha personnel. Despite his decades of suspicious deeds, Danzmo only ever acted in what he believed were the village's best interests. Humming down she said the letter speaks oh the door to the council was thrown open as some random ninja rushed in sorry for the disturbance, but Hokage-sama letter just came from Daimyo-sama, the ninja spoke bowing his head, why couldn't you wait for the meeting to end she replied glancing at him. I was going to, but I noticed it was a red ribbon, so I figured you had to see it quick. The moment he said Red Ribbon Tsunade's expression changed from annoyance to a very serious look. See the daimyos had a way of signaling the delicacy of letters he sent, and a ribbon is used to show how important the letter is Red signals classified and very important letters, the kind that in the wrong hands could be serious problems, yellow ribbons are mostly used to signal the hokage of visitors from the royal family and white for less important matters. Taking the letter she dismissed him as she opened it reading its contents, the council members now were becoming more impatient, they were yet to hear what Tsunade called them for now the demio. The tension in the room was really high as they watched her facial expression change randomly, finishing the letter she closed it and looked up her expression looking unhappy she began speaking to them. Now that I have your attention we may resume earlier this morning, I received a letter from the Raikage, dating back to two days age the letter was to notify me that there was an assassination attempt, with him being the target victim most of the members of the civilian councils began whispering some becoming worried about what the Damyo had to do with this, so what does this have to do with us and? Why is Damyo sama involvement here questioned Kaharu. Now I see why Hokage sama was worried this is becoming trouble sama said Shikaku leaning backwards into his seat what do you mean question Choza still confused. Sighing it obvious the ninja who carried out the attack is one of ours, why else would the Raikage send us this letter we aren't on good terms with them, and the involvement of the daimyo replied calmly. What was the thought going through everyone's mind? Hokage sama did not order such an attack, who would do such a thing, Tsum said angrily staring at the Hokage, as if asking for the name. What is the proof that this was done by Kanoha Shinobi and not someone from another village trying to create problems between us and Kumo Shibi asked the Hokage. We won't know for sure if it was really our Shinobi, but I'm sure if it was a henge the Raikage would have been able to tell Tsunade concluded before Danzo asked again, so who attacked the Raikage? That is what I was getting to you see the attack took place at noon, the attacker had anticipated the Raikage being alone, but that wasn't the case as he was in the process of briefing some ninjas. The attacker is said to be Uzumaki Narita said Tsunade soberly, and then the crowd erupted. What? Ignoring them she continued a detailed sketch was made from the description from those who witnessed the failed attack, and with that the Raikage has demanded the head of his attacker he even has the favor of the lightning Demio. Anzo was the first to speak up that is impossible Uzumaki is the container of the fox and would not be delivered to the hands of our enemy, he said it firmly already thinking of the possibility of losing the last Uzumaki, the only clan capable of holding the fox chakra confidently, without him no other person comes close. That is unless Konoha wants to change in Jurikin every 10 years interval, which rather than help would only serve in reducing their manpower, no, this was not an option. I say we give them what they want, Kanoha cannot stand going to war with Kumo, it would weaken us much more than we already air some random civilian council members said. This caused in a disagreement which went on with most of the civilians suggesting Naruto be beheaded, after all he committed a crime that can possibly cause a war between the village and Kumo, ruining their peacetime some, even said that a new child can be used to hold the fox, or better yet let the fox die too, since letting it stay alive is dangerous. The shinobi side were against it, most saying he was a great asset to the village and none wanted to burden their family or clan members with holding the fox. Enough. Yelled Tsunade breaking the argument, she was already angry about what she had to do now this childish quarrel. The Raikage demanded the head of Naruto, and with him being the Jinjuriken of Konoha a military asset, the decision does not fall on the counselor Hokage, but Daimyo to make, which is why we have a letter from him. He says, he has been informed of the situation by the lighting daimyo, that the Jinjuriken of Kanoha is to be jailed until he is either found guilty or he deems him worthy of release. How does he already know of the news Hokage-sama when you are just hearing of it today, Hiyashi asked the Hokage. 
Daimyo Sama has been in Hot Water Village for the past four days, it's possible the lighting Daimyo knew and sent a letter to him about the situation the Raikage possibly sent his letter the day of the attack, as it would explain why it reached here quicker than Daimyo Sama's Tsunade responded while looking at the council. She could see hesitation in them towards the Daimyo choice of action, so she lifted up her hand to silence whatever they wanted to say, I know most of you disagree with Daimyo Sama's decision, but there is nothing we can do to change it, unless you would prefer to be charged with treason and banished or maybe arrested. That did its work silencing everyone now she continued by 5pm today Uzumaki Naruto is to be arrested and his apartment is to be raided for anything that can serve as evidence and with that she dismissed everyone. Later that day. Tsang Tsunade rubbed her forehead with her palm, she still could not believe she was about to arrest Naruto. It felt very wrong, but as the Hokage she had to place the village as her priority not feelings. Setting her view on the guests in her office expecting a response from them since they had been quiet once she explained the situation. The silence was unnerving, but it proved they were processing what she said. So how long do you think it will take before we can go get him out, asked Sakura to Tsunade. It shouldn't be more than a couple weeks before we can either prove his innocence or find whoever framed him. She says. Okage-sama are you sure this is the only option, Naruto is not going to be happy about this dot, stated Yamato. It's the only conclusion I can come with, I'm sure Naruto would understand once we explain it to him say Tsunade seriously, before turning her gaze to an ambu that just poofed Hokage-sama Uzumaki-san is on his way here he spoke bowing slightly. But you are dismissed she replied meanwhile she was thinking now comes the hard part, I hope the others act believable enough. It wasn't long before Naruto arrived, given permission to enter he was greeted with the sight of Yamato leaning on the wall of the right hand side of Tsunade, who had a serious look plastered on his face, a couple inches to his left was Sakura Hurano, the second apprentice to their Kage Tsunade Senju, she had a look of worry. To her right stood Sai with his usual facial expression. Off to the far right was Kakashi Hataki, who had the same look of seriousness as Yamato in his one visible eye, between them all stood Naruto Uzumaki. Standing at Tsunade's left is her first apprentice Shizune, who could be seen holding her pig Tuntun, with an expression similar to Sakura's. They each stood in silent attention as Tsunade leaned back into her chair and gave them one more look, before explaining the reason for their summoning apparently, the Raikage was attacked two nights ago. Dot, she stated in a neutral tone. This earned a look of shock from everyone in the room, it would be mad to directly attack a Kage in their own village, especially one with as much strength as the Raikage. We received news that it was one of ours who did it she said, noticing the confused expression Naruto had before going on. And I have reasons to believe the suspect is here this made all of them stiffen, thinking about who it could be. Well all of them knew it was Naruto she was talking about, but he didn't. That's impossible botch and none of us would do such a thing, Naruto responded with seriousness as he looked Tsunade in the eyes. Funny you would say that, because Kumagakur sent us pictures of the attacker. She then removes two papers from a drawer in her desk and slides them across, revealing two badly drawn faces of Naruto on wanted posters. What you must be joking, Tsunade botch and he was quickly interrupted by Tsunade. You think I did it, I I didn't do anything. Exclaimed Naruto trying to wave it off with a forced laugh, thinking this was a prank. Bree Jown in from Kumagakur and the Raikage himself identified you. She said with a tone demanding his attention. At this point Naruto's jaw could have hit the floor with this much shocking information being sent his way all at once. No way. Yelled Sakura from the back Naruto would never do something like that. She continued with just as much shock as Naruto, there must have been a mistake, Tsunade-sama. Silence. Yelled the Kage. But before Sakura could finish Tsunade interrupts again, this is something that could affect our relations with the other villages. She explained a bit softer than her previous shout, but with the same amount of seriousness. Sakura remained silent after hearing this not wanting to make things worse it wasn't me. Naruto yelled desperately as he turned to face his sensei Kakashi sensei, you gotta believe me. He says I trained all day then he continues while taking a quick thinking pose, then I spent all night playing shogi with Shikamaru. He finished hoping they believe him. Naruto, until you're proven innocent you will be detained and don't worry the identity of the prison would only be known by me. Said Tsunade gaining back his attention. I'm telling you I didn't do anything. Naruto yelled again getting really nervous this is some kind of plot to get me away from the village. He says waving his arms around in panic. Enough. Yelled Tsunade, and as if on cue Naruto drops his hands into a familiar sign Kage bunch and no, he never got to finish his jutsu in time before he hears Mokuten Shichiru. From Yamato as beams of wood erupts from the floor and wrap themselves around Naruto's neck and arms, while it also creates a cage around him. Hey, wait. 
He yells as Tsunade hops over her desk and places a seal on the cage keeping him in place. As she finishes with the seal she also reaches inside and removes Naruto's Leaf Village headband before taking a step back from the cage. It wasn't me. He pleaded from within his binds. Take him away. The Lady Hokage yelled, and on cue several leaf jounin enter through the doorway and lift his cage, I didn't do anything. He yelled one last time before the leaf shinobi carried him away. Moments after he was gone everyone in the room let out a sigh, and they looked between each other, that was harder than I thought, said Tsunade walking to her chair, as she slumped back into it, hey, did I do alright? Asked Sakura frantically. They each stopped and looked out the window of the office to see Naruto being carried off through the village, as this happened groups of civilians could be seen cheering from the sides of the road and from within their homes that the demon was finally being taken care of. Yamato frowned his face as at the sight. Honestly speaking he felt like this was a bad idea, but then again there was no other option. I hope he doesn't get upset about this. Said Kakashi thoughtfully with the others thinking the same. Flashback end. Her initial plan was to prove his innocence but that became harder to accomplish when the hidden panel in his apartment was found. With his dairy talking about his secret training. Tsunade was forced to believe that Naruto was hiding something more to himself or if he betrayed the village. It seemed possible from the way he talked about this May woman constantly stating how he missed her, apparently his body hungers for her touch it was written in one of the letters and how he would do anything for them to spend at least some more time together. At the end of the day they were at three conclusions which were. One. Naruto knew they were going to search his things and already discarded the evidence. But then if he had enough time to burn or throw the evidence away, why didn't he run and why leave the letters and scrolls behind? 2. He got sloppy during the assassination, making sure he wasn't seen or underestimated people finding his hidden floorboard. It made sense as the floorboard was well hidden that the only way they found it was by pure luck. 3. The possibility he did not commit the crime. It was impossible to believe, because they were people who spotted Naruto leaving the office of the Raikage, some civilians, even ninjas, and if it was a henge, then the other ninjas would have noticed it, but all he recorded doing that day in his diary was training and playing shogi with Shikamaru. The witch Shikamaru stated he and Naruto played till 9pm. This was countered by another person saying Naruto was skilled in Kage Bunshin, so there was a possibility of Shikamaru playing with a clone, while the original himself carried out the assassination attempt, and Naruto could have made his clone write what he did in the diary, while removing the anything of the attack dot. But then to hold a jutsu from that distance even for minutes would possibly drain him, and with the cover-up of having exhausted his chakra from training would seem believable. Luckily a month after Naruto was imprisoned Tsunade received a letter from the Kusagakur, hidden grass village, that mentioned someone seeing Naruto around the village the day of the attack. Now Tsunade had a reason to believe he was framed, what confused her was why Naruto of all people to impersonate. If you wanted to give Konoha a bad reputation you should at least pretend to be someone with a higher status in the village, like a clan head, and what concerned her the most was the fact that he was technically jailed in Hazuki Castle, a shinobi prison in Kusagakur that's jointly run by all villages, it's easy breaking into, but breaking out is basically impossible. Tsunade had to not only find the real culprit, but also keep an eye on Naruto. Meanwhile in Kurigakur. The woman sat in her office deep in thought, her mind clouded with one very special person. It's been years since I last heard from him, I wonder if he's okay. May thought, ever since she heard of his arrest, she has been upset and worried the prison wasn't even announced, so she didn't know where he was to even visit him, so she decided to keep tabs on Kanoha, maybe the prison name might slip out somehow, but so far no progress. Feeling her mood dampened she tried to convince herself everything was okay, I'm sure he's doing just fine, but when I see him next, I'm going to show him just how much I miss him, she stated loudly smiling slightly. Looking at a piece of paper on her table, she frowned after reading its contents, folding it in her palm, the paper went ablaze as she moved to take another report. She quickly picked it up once she saw who it was from, silently praying that it contained good news. Sadly still no news from those observing Kanoha. Honestly it was getting annoying how Kanoha was keeping this information really private but she wasn't going to give up. Naruto was staring at a rusty pipe that had some blue liquid dripping from it, he had been looking at it for some time now, and he still couldn't understand how this very place he is in now exists, and at the same time doesn't. It was weird, but then again people spitting out fire from their mouth would be counted as weird too. Deciding to continue his journey Naruto continued walking. He still could not help but wonder if everyone had a place like this in their mind, that would be interesting he muttered while walking through dark hallways opening and closing doors, as he explored looking for something. Luckily it didn't take him long as he arrived at his destination. A dark hallway similar to the others he had recently passed, except this one had only five doors, four of them were metal and looked rusty. With two doors at his left and another by two by his right side. 
Then another door was straight in front of him captivated by this particular door, he ignored the others as he continued walking straight towards the object that stood in front of him. He continued until he stood directly in front of the unique door, carefully studying it he could already tell it was made of steel, it looked newer than the others, and even had a drawing of a chibi smiling him on it. He could feel the tension in his body begin to build up as he contemplated what could be beyond the door, he was worried, but he had to know what was awaiting him, and slowly building his courage, he stretched his hand till he held the doorknob. Slowly turning it he pulled opening it slightly, but to his surprise, the door was pushed completely open, as some brown liquid-like substance came gushing out like a broken dam. The liquid was so much that it slammed him into the wall, as it gradually filled the hallway so fast giving Naruto little to no time to react, he found himself drowning in his own thoughts, as his vision blurred slowly, thinking it was over for him, his facial expression dropped into a frown knowing he couldn't do anything. So he closed his eyes as he went with a flow. Excuse a voice said lightly. Choosing to ignore whatever that was he continued trying to relax, but this time he heard another sound tap 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 it, sounded like something light was repeatedly hitting something else. Excuse me sir the voice said again this time the voice sounded a bit louder, so opening his eyes to identify the source he was surprised with what he saw. The whole environment he had been in had changed from that of a sewer to a descent looking restaurant with people and other things. This was wrong and confused Naruto what the hell is going on here was all he could think of before the voice repeated again, this time sounding annoyed excuse me sir so turning his head from the cup of coffee he was staring at. He was greeted by the sight of a woman in a waitress clothe, who looked to be in her early twenties with brown hair, she packed in a ponytail style, her face was pretty average though she looked kinda angry. Infused his mind came up with one answer find a way out of this situation Naruto thought before coming up with what he thought was the best reply sorry about that I have a lot on my mind, how may I help you he said, giving her a nice grin, hoping she would take the bait. It worked the woman gave a small smile and replied I can tell. I've been trying to get your attention for some time, quickly responding to clear the tension sorry about that it won't happen again, ma'am bowing slightly to show he was truly sorry, something he learned from books. No it's okay sir, you have been sitting here for some time now, and I wanted to know if there was anything else you wanted to order she said, blushing slightly from embarrassment, as most of the customers turned their attention towards Naruto's table. Now that she mentioned it he did feel kinda hungry. Coffee sure as hell wasn't going to fill him Hamai would like some steamed rice, miso soup and grilled fish, he concluded smiling at her. Would that be all sir she replied watching him nod his head, then she bowed slightly before retreating to place his order. Waiting for his food he decided to dive into what he had accomplished the previous years from leaving Kanoha to secretly training, and he was proud to say it was a lot more than he expected. His personality even changed a bit once he started reading proper manners and some other things that was both a blessing and a curse. See he wanted to gain knowledge in many areas, and he decided to rely on books, and one of those aspects was women. For as long as he could remember he knew nothing about them or behavioral patterns. It also seemed a bit too weird how Jiraiya was obsessed with them, I mean they're humans too what's the difference, so he read all he could from basic romantic novels, female anatomy, and the eye-opener was basically Jiraiya's book. Ever since he read one his life changed, he was not sure if he could ever look at women as before. Sure he had tried to keep his curiosity from exceeding, but even he knew it was a failed battle, as he is a full-blown sex-deprived hormonal adult. The smut unlocked emotions he didn't know he had. The more and more he thinks about romance, the more he gets depressed about his non-existing love life, which is not really something that makes him happy with Sakura, choosing Sasuke over him even despite his betrayal, which still upset him. Then again it is not like he could forge a relationship with anyone from Konoha, as most of them hate him or see him as a dummy. But if there was a possibility then his choices would either be Hinata or Tenten. Both of them are similar in the sense that they are both strong, nice and care about their teammates, sure he hasn't spent alone time with Tenten, but when Lee got injured by Gara, he could see the concern on her face, she even visited him numerous times in the hospital. Hinata on the other hand is really quiet, at first he thought of her as weird because of how she suddenly turns red and faints. But after reading those books he kinda had a weird theory why, but he wasn't a 100% sure how accurate he was. She is nice and listens to him when he talks, he remembered when she visited him after the Sasuke retrieval mission, it was weird at first, but after a while everything was normal they had fun talking most times playing games. She even took it upon herself to make her visitation a consistent thing. Thinking seriously, if he was given the chance to date Sakura he wasn't sure he would accept it. Here's your meal sir the same waitress said placing his tray of food on his table, Naruto seeing this broke from his thoughts as he muttered thank you watching her walk back to the kitchen before putting his hands together, saying I did as he began eating. 30 minutes later. Naruto had finished his meal, so he decided to find a secluded area where he could train with his clones luckily, that didn't take much time. 
Walking to the center of his soon-to-be training ground, he created 30 clones telling them to separate into tens, each to practice his tojutsu, kinjutsu and fuinjutsu, while he the original removed his top, getting ready for some intense workout. He had been training for four hours, only taking few minutes break to relax. But now he was ready for his final part of the training, which was having a friendly spar with his clones, dispelling the existing clones, he relaxed again for his mind to process the data. Now energized he stood up getting ready for the spar, he created six clones and ordered five to take the higher grounds where they took a five-pointed star formation so they can watch the fight for flaws in his moves or improvements. When they were ready he signaled the clones that he was ready. Waiting patiently for the clone to begin attacking he watched the clone get into a defensive stance. Nodding his head Naruto spoke ninjutsu is not allowed only replacement, weapons and tojutsu, and remember we only use weapons when the others permitted smiling with anticipation. He was made with chakra of 30 clones, so basically he can withstand lots of hits, but losing a limb would still destroy him. During his training with his clones, Naruto realized why his clones could not take more than one hit before dispersing. Instead of using his chakra to improve the clone's quality he used it for quantity. This means by using the chakra he used to create multiple clones let's say 20 he could use it to make 5 10 or less, all he has to do is use the chakra to strengthen the body of the clones, almost like what the chakra armor does this increases the hits it can take. He heard one of the clones monitoring the match shot begin. They both stared at each other for some seconds before dashing with sudden speed the clone, throwing a right hook aimed for Naruto's head. Seeing this Naruto came to a halt while shifting his upper body backwards, he narrowly dodged the attack, then he threw a punch aimed for the clone's head which struck, but with less impact than he anticipated. Naruto happy he got first hit tried again this time with his left hand, but the clone dodged ducking under his hand, the clone tackled him to the ground sitting above him, the clones rained punches on Naruto, who was trying his best to dodge them but was failing mostly. Dodging one of the punches the clone's knuckles hit the floor hard, giving Naruto time for a counter attack which he took, headbutting the clone. The stunned clone's body weakened slightly, which Naruto used to his advantage grabbing the collar of the clone's tracksuit he pulled forward to slam his head on the floor, which almost worked had the clone not regained his senses, quickly replacing himself with a log. Betting up quickly Naruto was forced to dodge a kick which was followed up by more kicks and punches, crouching down going for a leg sweep, the clone jumped up quickly reacting to his attack. Seeing this Naruto decided to try something new spinning on his right hand, something like the coffee grinder dance, he stretched his free hand up to grab the clone's leg missing one leg he was successful in grabbing the other, luckily the clone did not jump too high. Pulling on the clone's leg he dragged it down as he rotated his body to swing the clone away, but the clone reacted quick flipping while doing a handstand. He landed perfectly and was about to attack Naruto who was dashing towards him when one of the observing clones shouted Kenjutsu. Summoning a plain katana he blocked a strike from the original Naruto as they looked at each other smelling like kids playing with toys, they began attacking each other with a lot more vigor that even a passerby would think they were just trying to kill each other. At every attack Naruto made it was either blocked or deflected it was getting annoying, but it made sense as he was basically fighting himself, I have to end this soon, I'm getting tired he thought before he went for a direct slash that was blocked by the clone, both of their sword forming an X shape as they fought for dominance, pushing back on each other, Naruto saw a chance to win, and so he took a step back, letting the surprised clone fall forward. Moving the hand holding the sword forward he quickly thrust it forward stabbed the clone in the chest which dispelled him. Looking down to the floor while trying to regain his breath, he heard the clones drop from the trees, Naruto sat onto floor panting as they approached him so, how did I do this time he said, not bothering to look at who he was talking to. Pretty good, considering you have been training since last night and this morning too one clone said stating the obvious. I have noticed that most of our attacks are too direct when using the kickboxing fighting style, and you did not use the other style, any particular reason another clone said which was followed up by the other's support. Raising up his head I felt using that style in a spar would be unnecessary, and about the direct stuff, that's how the style is remember, we made many alternative counter attacks for whatever move the enemy chooses to use. Naruto replied while looking at the remaining clones, before asking if there was anything else which they responded no. Well if that's all I'm off of the hotel I need a nice rest, the rest of you can continue training on Fuinjutsu and Kenjutsu Naruto said as he created 40 clones that were directed by the other 5 to where they would train. Seeing as he wasn't needed again he left the training ground. Naruto had been walking for 5 minutes now, and for some reason his mind continued bringing up his previous thoughts, he initially expected his mind to shove the thoughts of his non-existing romance life aside for a longer time, but too bad it failed, now it was all B could think of, and he had nothing to distract himself. Humming to a conclusion to his problem was a bit troublesome, but it was either. 1. Find someone to date and possibly marry real quick before he returns back to Konoha. Or. 2. 
Go back to Kanoha and remain single for life. Mentally laughing it was obvious he would go with plan one, but now how he would do that was the problem. It would be weird to just walk up to some random girl and start flirting with her, and the probability of him getting a girl that way was 50 50s He could also try attending social events, that seemed better and all, but he doesn't really have any connections here or know of any event being held. Paying attention to the surrounding ahead of him was a bar, stopping to think of if he could try something Jiraiya would likely use to pick up girls. Mentally laughing he thought those only work if you're looking for a hooker or some weird chick who's probably a guy in disguise, he thought as he continued heading for the hotel. Walking past the door Naruto was rudely shoved to the side by someone who didn't even care to apologize as he dashed past him. About to yell at him he was hit by another person who followed after the other, unlike the first one this one decided to yell at him watch where you going loser. This enraged Naruto and picking up a little stone nearby he aimed and threw it, watching as the stone hit the second guy on the head, instantly knocking him unconscious. Laughing he dusted his palms as he was about to walk away before he heard someone laugh and say nice shot. Caught off guard Naruto replied thanks as he turned around to see the stranger that complimented him, his body stiffened anticipating an enemy, Naruto stared hard at the woman who stood before him. Feeling slightly uncomfortable from his silent stare she tried to lighten the mood, saying you know staring at a girl is not always the best way to make a good impression, this snapped Naruto back to reality as he apologized. Don't worry about it, besides you're not so bad looking either she said giving him a small smile. Naruto blushed from what she said before replying thanks um miss. Walking past Naruto she replied may and to be clear I'm not going to attack you Naruto was a bit surprised that she noticed his body tense up from her compliment. Honestly he wasn't scared of her or anything, rather it was that she kinda snuck up on him without him sensing her presence at all. He rushed to meet her, and when he was beside her he said sorry about that, your response just caught me by surprise smiling at her, he extended his hand my name is Naruto, and it's nice meeting you may sen he said, as he waited for her to either take his hand or leave him hanging which would have annoyed, he watched as she gently extended her hands to hold his. She replied no need for all that formality stuff call me Mayor may chan said smiling cheekily. Happy that she accepted his apology he decided he wasn't going to waste it, besides this served as an opportunity for him to gain more experience in talking with females differently. Well then I prefer you call me Naruto Kun Naruto replied calmly meanwhile his mind was screaming what are you doing, don't say that turning his thoughts off. Well then Naruto Kun it's nice to meet you, May said after giggling at his failed attempt to fluster her. Naruto trying to think of anything interesting to say that does not include Kanoha training said you know this the first time I have seen you in the village, are you new or you're just visiting? I'm here on some business matters to be honest, I just arrived in the village some minutes ago and wanted to get familiar, maybe have some fun, May said as she looked at some of the shops beside her, unaware of Naruto gazing at her briefly, there's tons of fun things you can do here, I'm sure you would enjoy your stay, Naruto said enthusiastically. This interested May causing her to focus her attention as they continued their conversation. It had been 30 minutes of walking and talking Naruto, and May had reached the separate roads to their hotel. Naruto said I had fun May-chan, maybe we can hang out sometime feeling bummed about their conversation coming to an end. Seeing this as a good opportunity to tease him oh like a date. She said while trying her best to look innocent. Date it's not like that, I just really enjoyed talking to you that's all I promise he apologized quickly before she became upset. Relax I was just kidding, I enjoyed our little conversation too maybe we can continue some other time she said, well turning from him have a good night Naruto kun she said, before turning slightly giving him a wink as she continued walking to her destination. Watching her walk away Naruto sighed as he smiled said good night Mei chan, before walking to the hotel he stays. Two days later. Waking up early today, Naruto had decided that rather than training he was going to buy some new clothes and equipments. Sluggishly getting up he turned to look at Jiraiya's bed, immediately noticing it was empty except for the piece of paper on it, getting up he stretched before walking to see what was written on it, already expecting some lame ass excuse to ditch him. It didn't come as a surprise when the he saw I have some serious research to do so continue with your training folding the paper he threw it away. He had gotten used to the excuses Jiraiya makes to the point that it doesn't even matter if he trains him or not, but he prefers training alone, as it allows him to be more flexible in things he tries during training. Walking to the bathroom he decided it was time to get his day started. Brushing his teeth and taking a bath had taken quite a little time, but now all he needed to do was send his clones to train and find something to eat. Closing the room door Naruto had decided to eat something outside, walking away from the hotel he contemplated where and what to eat, seeing a small restaurant he decided to check them out, he entered and found a decent place to sit getting comfortable, he observed someone walking towards him, who from her dressing he could tell she was a waitress here. 
She had light blue hair cut in a Haim style she stood at a 5-0. Her body shape was average, with an average burst, size I'm bad, in describing so just picture the default Japanese waitress outfit in a Nimes. When she was close enough she bowed slightly good morning sir, what would you be having today she said smiling politely waiting for his response. A sandwich and tea would be fine, Miss Naruto replied giving her a smile that caused her to blush. Nodding her head she turned to walk away before giving him a final look, then rushing to the kitchen. Naruto not paying much attention to her didn't notice her action as he was thinking about the fact that he had not seen Mei since that night, to be realistic, the chances of both of them running into each other was kinda slim, the village although not as big as Konoha was pretty big, with a very high population, and hoping to find her, would be like looking for a particular grain of rice in the bag full of rice. Shaking his head he directed his thoughts to the upcoming festival, which was kinda the reason for him going shopping today. Sighing he thought who knows maybe he might see her there. Here's your meal sir, the same waitress said placing his tray of food on his table, Naruto seeing this broke from his thoughts as he said thank you miss. If there's anything else you need I'm here so feel free to call me she said smiling at him like she expected something else. Yes ma'am Naruto said giving her a playful salute which caused her to giggle. Watching her walk back to the kitchen where she was immediately pulled by some other female waitress, which Naruto summarized as weird. Staring at his food hungrily he clapped his hands together, saying Idadakamasu as he began eating. Surprised at how quickly he finished his meal Naruto called the waitress over who to his surprise responded quickly thanks for the meal, it was delicious he said, sipping the remains of his tea, before pulling out money from his pocket to pay. Thank you hope you come back again, she stuttered a reply while blushing before taking the money from him while bowing down slightly. One hour later. Who knew shopping could be so stressful Naruto though as he walked out a clothing shop. Immediately after leaving the restaurant he had walked from various clothing shops looking for something to buy, but to his annoyance, some of them either did not have kimonos or were sold out, luckily he was able to buy one that was rather full looking as it was plain black without any design. Honestly it wasn't anything special but he could manage. Walking sluggishly to a nearby street bench, Naruto hung his backpack that contained the scrolls where the clothes he bought were sealed on the arm of the bench. Sitting down he relaxed his body as he closed his eyes. He couldn't believe his clones forgot about the dispelling technique he used to reduce the stress of information, now he had to deal with a mind-shattering headache, and it hurt as hell. Unlucky for him, his rest was cut short as he heard someone call his name. Thinking nothing of it he decided to ignore the voice, but then he heard it again this time a bit closer than before. Wonder who that is, only a few people know me here he thought briefly before it hit him including raising up his head quickly he looked around hoping that he was right. Laughing someone's feeling really energetic today was the only response the intruder gave. May Naruto stuttered blushing as he studied her. This was the first time he had seen her clear, sure the first day they met he could tell she was good looking, but now having a good look he could sum her up in one word beautiful he thought still looking at her saying nothing. May is a tall, slender woman with fair skin. She has green eyes, an ankle-length auburn hair styled into a herringbone pattern at the back, a top knot tied with a dark blue band, and with four bangs at the front. Two bangs are short, with one covering her right eye, and two are long, crossing each other on her bust, just below her chin. She wears a long sleeve dark blue dress that falls just below the knees. It seems to be closed at the front with a zipper, and is kept open on the front right side from the waist down. The dress only covers up to the upper part of her arms and the underside of her breasts. Underneath, she wears a mesh armor that covers slightly more of her upper body than her dress. She also wears a skirt in the same color as her dress and, underneath those, mesh leggings reaching down over her knees. Around her waist, she wears a belt with a pouch attached to the back on the left, along with high-yield sandals, shin guards reaching up over her knees, dark blue nail polish on her fingers and toes and purple lipstick. Naruto coughing as he tried to regain his composure are you looking good he said, trying to think of a something less awkward. Meanwhile he was panicking and his thoughts crew me sideways and call me Willy, how in the hell is she this good looking? She's way out of my league. Laughing at his reaction same could be said about you Naruto kun she said, before continuing so any particular reason why you sleeping on a public bench. Just had a really stressful day and decided to rest a bit he replied scratching the back of his head as he chuckled lightly. Oh sorry for disturbing your rest how about I make it up to you, May said with her tone changing into a sultry tone, as she licked her lips rather slowly. Dot. Sweating vigorously Naruto responding nah it's okay, if you don't mind me asking what you doing here looking away at her. Hot was the only word that echoed in his mind. I heard the zoo here is really awesome, so I wanted to check it out, but I kinda don't know where it is, May said feeling slightly embarrassed, since she arrived she had not had time to explore the village. So when she heard about the zoo she decided to go see it, a chance to ditch Ao and the others. 
looking away from Naruto as if she expected him to make fun of her, May observed the civilians passing by them, she watched as many couples passed by them holding hands some other kissing and openly flirting with each other. Confused about why she suddenly went silent Naruto observed her, he saw what she was looking at, and he took note of her sudden change of emotions before she quickly hid it. Do you know where it is she said smiling at him trying to hide her sadness. Silently looking at her for a while Naruto knew what she was doing, when he was younger, he hid all his anger and sadness behind cheerful smiles, so it was really easy for him to tell the real deal from a copycat. Yeah, but directing you from here is going to be a bit confusing he replied calmly. Thinking for a while would you mind taking me there, that is if you're not busy she said, hoping Naruto would take the bait. Going to the zoo alone was like going to some fancy restaurant alone you would draw unnecessary attention to yourself. Naruto stared blankly for a while before blinking repeatedly his mind processing what she said is she asking me out. No no she said she didn't know the way there, so I'm only an escort. But then again this seems like a good opportunity too he thought mentally smirking. If I didn't know better Mei-chan I would say you're asking me out. Nice plan, but too bad Naruto-kun Mei thought mentally laughing at how easily he fell for her trap, what if I am Naruto-kun she said, giving him a smirk, while emphasizing on the kun as she leaned forward, as if trying to give him a peck, giving him a clear view of her cleavage. Don't tell me you're going to turn me down, she continued faking a sad look switch mood from sexy to sad quickly. Gulping trying to avoid looking at her cleavage while failing Naruto thought a trap. No I must not lose enjoying her teasing, then it's a date he said giving her a full blown smile, not really getting a good comeback. Surprisingly May blushed for a bit before suppressing it. Interesting May thought getting up why don't we start going she said feeling hyped about how their date would turn out. Nodding his head Naruto got up hanging his backpack on his shoulder as they both walked from the park. Some minutes later at the zoo. Naruto chuckled as he looked at Mei feeling the excitement she was obviously failing to contain, you really do like animals he said, as he paid some money for tickets, I don't know how zoos work, I think you pay for some kind of pass that allows you to walk freely. Of course animals are so cute and adorable Mei replied smiling. Normally she wouldn't let herself show most of her girly side, but she felt comfortable around Naruto, it also helped that he paid attention to her. I feel like I should be concerned about an animal stealing my date, Naruto said looking slightly down, this earned some giggles from other people. Imagining himself on an altar as he heard an unknown voice say ladies and gentlemen I give you Yuzumaki Naruto, the first man to lose his date to an animal meanwhile a ripped cola stayed in the background, flexing his bicep Naruto was mentally crying. Laughing I doubt that would happen she said noticing Naruto get slightly happy, deciding to have some fun with him. But against a panda you might have some problems there Naruto-kun. Then I just have to keep you away from the panda section he said smirking proudly at his master plan. They spent their time seeing various animals and getting to know each other, after all that's what dates are about, they exchanged stories, and Naruto made her laugh most of the time there it was really fun. Deciding to end their date when it was getting late Naruto walked May to her hotel. The walk to the hotel was not much they both talked and enjoyed each other's company. But something else happened, they had stopped to buy some ice cream, while Naruto was chatting with the clerk, May apparently had gotten distracted looking at a passing couple she couldn't help it, but curl her fist. Noticing she was not answering him about the flavor she wanted, he observed what she was interested in for a while before looking at her, seeing the same emotion as the one she displayed at the park. Naruto frowned slightly before covering it with a smile he stretched his hands forward before poking her by her side, this caught her by surprise, making her jump a bit, making a weird sound. Oh my Kami, did you just EP laugh not expecting such a reaction from her? I did not, I I may said in denial trying to think of a good lie. But Naruto was just looking at her smiling waiting for a response. I think it was cute he said giving her a wide smile which instantly got her silent. Now why don't you make an order, we got some ice cream to devour he concluded playfully giving her a cheeky grin. The clerk watched them with amusement as May made her order. You two are so adorable she said to Naruto. Thanks he replied. So how long have you two been dating she added happily looking at them. Dating was all Naruto and Mei mentally repeated as they looked at each other blushing slightly. Well we do look like a couple Naruto thought as he looked at Mei briefly before replying not for long, hopefully we would last for a very long time, as he threw his arm over Mei's shoulder making her blush, the clerk squealed with delight from his response as she rushed to give them their order. Not wanting to intrude on their date. Quickly collecting their ice cream Naruto paid before exchanging farewells with the clerk as they took their leave. Removing his hand for her shoulder Naruto decided to try a risky move by stretching his single hand towards Mei's, immediately taking her hand in his. Now they were walking hand in hand, it was exciting and weird to Mei. 
Thinking of why he would suddenly make a brave move, she concluded that he had noticed her reaction to the passing couple, or it was payback for all her teasing. So testing her theory she said that was a nice plan back there. I almost failed to notice what you did there looking at their linked fingers. Tuckling slightly from being caught he said, come on we're on a date, it's only natural for us to hold hands. Observing him if his response was a lie next time do it from the start, May said pouting from his response. Yes ma'am he said saluting her while smiling at her implying the possibility of another date nice going Romeo, he mentally applaud himself for his slick save. When they got to the hotel May stays, both parties exchanged their pleasantries as they prepared to go their separate ways. But then May asked Naruto if he could show her around the village the next day, that is if he wasn't busy. Quickly agreeing, it was decided that he would meet her at the hotel early in the morning. The third day. Basically Naruto and May spending their day going sightseeing in the village. It wasn't a very interesting thing to do. But Naruto saw it as an opportunity from Kami for him to strengthen their developing closeness, so he spent most of his time trying to know more about her and keeping her entertained. It also helped that May was making it a bit easier for his advances, this gave him the boost in confidence that he could accomplish his goal by the end of the day. He was finally able to ask her out to the festival. So Naruto ended his day by giving praises to Kami that she accepted his proposal, honestly he didn't know how he would have reacted should she have refused. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comment section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.